Hello and welcome to this edition of Hack Naked TV. I'm your host, Bo Bullock, and this week we're going to talk about the opium hack, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, corporate espionage, and I'm going to talk about hackers, or well, the possibilities of hackers, manipulating drug pumps at hospitals to deliver fatal dosages. As always, Hack Naked TV is brought to you by Black Hills Information Security. If you're in the need of a penetration test, vulnerability assessment, or any other type of security assessment for that matter, contact us at Black Hills InfoSec by sending an email over to consulting at blackhillsinfosec.com. All right, the opium hack. This is something that has been publicized quite a bit in the uh, the news. So, um, if you haven't heard, the uh, the Office of Personnel Management was hacked, and the records of uh, all current and past federal employees and contractors was stolen. Um, it was originally only believed that the personal information, so things like social security numbers, names, addresses, was stolen, which that would have been bad. But it was also revealed that the security clearance information for those individuals was stolen as well. Um, that makes this way worse. Uh, so the, the OPM houses a database that contains the, uh, the, the information that's filled out in the form called the SF-86. The SF-86 form is the form you have to fill out in order to get a security clearance. Um, it contains a ton of really sensitive information about you. Um, I mean, it's a huge form. I looked through it briefly, but I found some really interesting fields that, uh, that are in there. Things like your children's and relatives' names, any foreign trips you might have taken, any contacts with any foreign nationals, um, any past residences, any, all, well, all your past job history. Uh, any names. I mean, you get the idea. It contains information that is about you, um, not just your, your social security number, name, and address. It contains information that can be used to impersonate you and be used against you and your family um, if you're a federal employee. It's, it's really scary that somebody has actually stolen pretty much all of that data. Um, I mean, this, this type of information is, is the foundation or is going to be the foundation for uh, for other attacks against individuals and government agencies. I mean, I mean, it's been stated that that China was the one that stole it, but I mean, if it, if it was China, I mean, they now have access to uh, the this type of information for employees that are in agencies like the CIA, the FBI, NSA. Information about their families, their homes, uh, past jobs, names. Um, I mean, it's it's really kind of terrifying that that information is gone. Um, so, so how was it actually discovered, though? Well, so the OPM has been told for a number of years now that their security is really horrible. So they decided to actually try to fix something, and they had a third party in trying uh, to, or to, to demo a product for them. During that product demo is when they first discovered the breach. Um, they, they discovered that the breach was actually dated back to, like, December of 2014. Um, and so, so the, uh, the OPM is investigated yearly by... The, uh, the, the Office of the Inspector General. The Inspector General has reported for at least the last like six years that they have just crazy inadequate security protections. Um, some of these inadequacies that they have, things like no inventory, like they, weren't, they were not inventorying their system, so they don't even know what's on their network. They weren't performing routine vulnerability scans, so they don't even know what vulnerabilities are on the systems they actually know about. Uh, there was numerous servers, numerous servers missing patches. They weren't using two-factor authentication, and they weren't using encryption. So that database of stolen wasn't even encrypted. Which, however, I mean, it wouldn't even matter if it was encrypted because the attackers had credentials of the administrator that could log into the database. So even if it was encrypted, it wouldn't even matter. Um, and th I mean, that's that's a quarter of the top twenty critical controls right there. Um, I mean, when you're missing that many of the top twenty critical controls and you're trying to protect sensitive information of that nature, it's going to be really hard. <laughs> so, all right, this next story is about another hack, but I think it's a little bit less of a risk to our national security. However, I thought it was still kind of an interesting story. Um, so the, the St. Louis Cardinals hacked the Houston Astros. If you don't know what those are, those are Major League Baseball teams, which is kind of hilarious. Um, so the New York Times reported that this is actually the first known case of uh, corporate espionage involving one sports team hacking another sports team. Uh, so, so what exactly happened here? Uh, so the general manager of the Houston Astros has what he calls the, uh, the ground control. And ground control contains all the collective baseball knowledge of the Houston Astros, including things like, like trade talks, potential trade talks, um, things that you don't want other, other teams to know about because that's, you know, that's, that's your, 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 your advantage and, you know, potentially, you know, gaining a new player, things like that. So, so how was this actually, how, how did the Cardinals actually access this? Well, the general manager of the, the Astros came from the Cardinals, where he had something similar to ground control, and he used the same password that he used when he was at the Cardinals. So the Cardinals had that password. They literally just logged right into his new database at the Astros. Um, I mean, password reuse is a huge problem. We see it all the time. Um, we see where 
an organization has employees that go sign up on a random website like LinkedIn or something uh, where they use the same email address and the same password that they would use to log into their corporate account. So whenever that third party site like LinkedIn or I don't know, MySpace or Facebook, is MySpace even a real thing anymore? Um, that, and that site gets hacked, that information gets dumped to the internet. It makes it trivial for attackers to go and log in to either, you know, like an Outlook web access or maybe even a VPN with that employee's credentials. So um, don't reuse your passwords and tell your employees not to as well. Um, I mean, the good news for the, the Astros is that the, the Cardinals, hackers, straight up logged in from their, their home IP address, from their home address without, without any, any proxies or anything to anonymize where they're coming from. So it made it really easy for the FBI to find them. All right, let's talk about healthcare devices for a minute. A security researcher uh, found that this, this Hospira Life Care PCA drug infusion pump, well, a, a number of these pumps, actually have some really terrifying vulnerabilities. Uh, he found that remotely he could update the firmware on this device to literally change the dosage that was being pumped at that time. Uh, this is, a, I mean, this is a fatal vulnerability. I mean, he, he could literally change the drug or change the, the amount of the drug that's being pumped to a patient. Um, you know, in addition to that, uh, there's a number of other alarming vulnerabilities he discovered. So things like this, this specific device had, uh, the, you had the ability to tell that to it as root without authentication. On top of that, uh, so these, these devices have wireless cards in them so that you can connect them to like a, like a hospital protected wireless network where you might have some other, uh, you know, critical devices. Um, so the, the actual WPA keys for connecting to that network are stored in clear text in a config file on the device. So now not only can you access the device as root without authentication, you can get access to the wireless network by grabbing the creds from this device as well. Um, I mean, it's just, it's ridiculous. So the other thing that, I mean, uh, it's missing is that it, there's no authentication to actually modify the drug libraries, making it possible to actually update the firmware and change the dosage that's being given to a patient. Um, I mean, anyone with physical access could plug into an Ethernet port on this device, or if they had access to the wireless network, could connect to it, you know, as root over Telnet and potentially modify the drug, or modify the actual amount of the drug that's being pumped by the pump. It's terrifying. Um, I mean, the, so the FBI, or not the FBI, the FDA has warned uh, hospitals about these devices, but I mean, it comes down to the, the device was built with the medical aspect of it in mind, completely negating the security aspects. I mean, if you're a vendor creating a, you know, potentially life-critical device, security needs to be at the top of that development life cycle. Um, I mean, because somebody's going to find these vulnerabilities, and luckily, I mean, it was a security researcher that found it and reported it to the, the vendor, but, you know, potentially somebody really malicious finds that, they might not report it. They might do really bad things with it. That's it for this week's edition of Hack Naked TV. Uh, check out more at hacknaked.tv. You can check out the always hilarious, always informative Security Weekly at blip.tv slash securityweekly. Check out the show notes from Security Weekly at securityweekly.com slash wiki. Uh, I will be speaking at the HCCIA conference on command control testing data exfiltration. Use the 15% off discount code below. It's uh, hack naked, all uppercase, no spaces. If you want to contact me, my email is bo at blackwellsinfosec.com. And I will be uh, on Twitter at daftac. So have a great weekend. Bye.